we're, we're locked into a little booth right now here, so I kind of feel like I'm a, a zoo animal. Yeah. Because as everybody keeps on walking by yeah. here, they're like, who are those guys? What are they doing? Can what are they talking them? about? Let me them. Observe the North them. American man in his natural habitat. <laughs> Recorded live at the Caltech stage at SHOT Show 2020 in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, it's Meet the Presser. Meet the Pressers. Matt Mallory and Clint Necro. Brought to you by Public Safety and Education and the Trigger Pressers Union. And now, your hosts. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Meet the Pressers. We're here at the Caltech stage. They're allowing us to use it here to do some interviews while we're here at SHOT Show 2020. We have some very special guests on the show today, Mike Brickner and Steve Fisher from the USCCA. This episode of Meet the Pressers is made possible with the generous support of Mantis X. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Caltech, Next Level Training, ASP, Saber Red, and the Law of Self-Defense, Car Firearms Group, the Safer Faster Defense Responder, 2.0, Shooter Technology Group, and Henry Rifles. Thank you. I mean, it's really cool that Caltech let you guys use the studio, though. Yeah, so for sure. That's, that's just, awesome. Yeah, that's really cool that they let you do that. Um, may, uh, SHOT Show 2020, as you probably could hear already in my voice. I'm um, starting to get that shot show thing that they, uh, what do they call it? Shot show crud. The crud or something like that. I don't feel sick, I'm just tired. So if I look like I'm uh, crabby, uh, I'm just <laughs> tired. So Steve, when did you take, when did you come in to play into the uh, training division at, at USCCA? No, oh, that's a good, that's actually a good story. Do you guys got time? We got time, you that's what you're here for. <laughs> no, actually, um, uh, my story, uh, starts about 15, 16, 17 years ago. I, I gotta really think back. But um, Tim Schmidt, the uh, founder and president of the USCCA, was actually one of my martial arts students. He and his wife and his three children. We became friends. Um, ultimately, uh, about five years after we began our relationship, he asked me if I'd be interested in uh, coming over and working for his company. And I'm like, sure. What do you want me to do? And he <laughs> said, we'll figure it out. Nice. So at that point in time, USCCA membership was nothing other than, it was more of a subscription. You know, we had the Concealed Carry Magazine, and we had a few um, products, some books, and some DVDs. 2011 uh, launched the Self-Defense Shield. So the, uh, the part of the business that has grown the most has been the launch of the uh, legal backed protection mm -hmm. membership benefit. So, I still haven't told you how this training division thing started. It came after the launch of the self-defense shield, where I figured out I wasn't going to be a graphic designer or a direct response <laughs> copywriter. You got, you got tired of scrubbing toilets and packing envelopes. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. That got a little bit, you know, wore me <laughs> we out. We all pay our bit. dues, right? <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> so, we did have a book that we were selling at the time called Concealed Carry and Home Defense Fundamentals. And um, we saw an opportunity because there was no classes, no curriculum that was uh, created and offered to instructors universally across the country. You know, they have that consistent approach towards um, educating yourself to become a responsibly armed citizen, a responsibly armed American, right? So we took that book and we built out the first instructor toolkit. And you guys were so, two of the first guys to buy that. Oh, I bought it the second I saw it in the magazine. I called right up. Yeah. You might have been the guy that called me then and said, what are you thinking? You're selling this instructor <laughs> information and you're not, uh, you don't, you're not certifying anybody to teach that. So your strong NRA backgrounds you know, led you to appreciate the, uh, the fact that people should really know what they're doing, yeah. um, not just put a PowerPoint behind them. I heeded the advice that we were getting at that time and we launched our first certified instructor class in November of 2013. So that grew. Uh, yeah. From there, we found out that there was a definite interest. I think the classes you guys were in, there were 70, was, 80 people. I was in classes. Chicago, I was in the second one. You were in the second one. We wanted to scale this program and we weren't gonna be able to do it on our, you know, on our own, taking the show on the road is quite expensive. 
And um, we follow the NRA's model, which is that they um, have training counselors. Sure. People that teach people to teach people. We launched our uh, USCCA and still carrying home defense fundamentals training counselor program um, two years later. And I was in the first class for you that. You were in the first class. I bugged you from the minute I got, I, I became certified as an instructor, like, you need to do TCs, man, you need to do TCs. Yeah, both of these guys are persistent, and that's not a negative, it's actually a, a very strong character trait, and we appreciate that, because their persistence has helped us to grow the program. You know, there's a constant and never-ending uh, improvements going on with our curriculum. Absolutely. The way that it presents itself, the way that we uh, teach our instructors to present it also. That's one nice thing about the company is that we take what you guys say and actually try to implement it because some of the best ideas come from outside on of, the ground. Sure. you know. Boots on the ground. Yeah. Sure. I mean, you guys are the ones that are doing the teaching. You're out there with the students every day. I, so. I tell my instructor candidates when, when we go through the instructor development don't get set in a pattern because this organization changes and tries things and constantly evolves right. and is constantly upgrading and improving and that's refreshing. Yeah. It's real easy to get stuck in a rut and continue to do the same thing. Yep. But it's, it again reinforces in, in, the, in the training when I bring that up, you need to know the material. If you know the material, if they make a little change, you can, you can adjust with that. It's but not if, a big deal. If you have to start on page one to get to page 12 and if you skip somewhere in the middle, you lose your, you don't know the material well enough. Yeah. Yeah, the, the evolution continued then because we started adding curriculum then. So uh, we have the countering the mass shooter threat curriculum. Both of you guys teach that. Yeah. We have emergency first aid fundamentals. You guys have that. We have a women's handgun and self-defense fundamentals class. So it's designed by a woman, Beth Alcazar, and it's, it's used to teach women. And it's the language that they speak. It's something right. that they're, they're comfortable learning that way. We we're fortunate to have Beth be able to put that curriculum together for us, and it's been really well. Show too, so we're yeah. fortunate enough to have her on the show and, and talk about that whole the whole segment. Yeah, she was on season one. If you want to look that one up, season one. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. So then we went to our first live fire instructor certification. So uh, we talked with uh, Rob Pincus, and the reason we talked to him is because we wanted to come out with our first live fire certification with something that was unique. We didn't want to do the same thing that somebody else was doing. Uh, we wanted to do something a little bit different. So we, based off of uh, his uh, combat focused shooting curriculum, uh, we have what we're calling defensive shooting fundamentals. And we've got two levels, level one and level two. Um, we've been doing really well. It's been a, uh, a, a tough goal of it to begin with because the standards are so high. Absolutely. And we believe in you know speed of execution, so we want to market quick with that. Um, and that being said, you guys were in the first classes and you know that we talked earlier about that whole evolutionary thing, always getting better. Yep. Uh, every one of those classes that we've taught now, every one of the defensive shooting fundamentals classes, the certified instructor portions have become better. We add things, you know. Mike's forte in the company, besides talking to states and sheriffs about getting us recognized as a national training organization, is he runs all of our digital learning materials. So um, let him know. Why don't you talk to him a little bit because I'm getting dry. No, you're doing great. Just keep going. But tell him a little bit about what so, we did um, with uh, Rob and the digital world. So one really cool thing is that we have our learning management system that we've been able to put all this information into and then get it out to all of the students and the instructors. And the ability to update that and have it be a real-time update is, is awesome. And it allows us to roll out curriculum that much faster, yeah. which we've got several that are coming out this year. Uh, we've got one actually we launched here at SHOT, so that's laser train. Yep. So we teamed up with uh, the boys like over at Next Level Training, yep. got that one going. Uh, and as most people don't know, so I guess we'll kind of let it out here, is that there's an instructor version that's going to be coming right behind that as well. Great. So that'll be another tool for our instructors to use to get those dry fire reps using the CERT pistol in their classes. Yeah, I've, I've worked with uh, Mike and Britt extensively yeah, over the awesome years. They're awesome guys. Yeah, matter of fact, about five years ago, I was beta testing a, a class similar to that, and I'm, I like to think maybe some of the things that we did at that time kind of evolved into what you guys are doing. Yeah, I think Mike said, okay, this is what didn't work. 
So now we're going to do a different Hey, that's way. fine, man. That's, we learn from so our, our failures more than our successes, right? Well, they were in your Chicago class in Yeah, that's when I first met them. And, and yeah. uh, man, we, because of USCC, I made a great relationship with, yeah. with Mike and Britt. And if, if, heck, if it weren't for Mike, I don't think I would, a, would have been able to do the videos that I did for NRA at the time. And, it, you know, so I always owe him a great deal of gratitude for his uh, assistance and mentorship. You guys as well, man, I really appreciate everything you guys have done to help me and help Matt professionally, but also as educators and as human beings. I think I'm a better person because I've had the opportunity to work with you guys. I agree, you are a better person. <laughs> yeah. well, I'll, Since I'll, you've been working I'll add on to the love <laughs> fest and say, you know, I definitely appreciate you know, that breakfast that we had with Laser Ammo and I honestly believe that was the- That was the Louisville, right? I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember where I was this morning. Or somewhere's in the Las we're Vegas. We're going to get mad tested when we're done Coba. here. I need get Coba or something. Yeah. <laughs> CBD is I a was... gateway oil. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps telling me that. I'm Austin Allgaier from Mantis. This is Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Macro. Meet the Pressers. Oh my goodness, it's light. It's so light. It is light. Oh, Very smoke. light. So here at SHOT Show 2020, just got done shooting the Glock 44, 22 caliber. Very light, minimal recoil. Sight acquisition was freaking phenomenal. Thought it literally was a plastic toy gun when I picked it up, it was that light. It's unbelievable, man. Revolutionary in the market. Check it out. If you're looking at a cheap alternative for training, the weight of the gun is pretty shocking. It's very, very light. But the feel, it feels exactly like a Glock 19 as far as how it fits in the hand. The grip angle is exactly the same. And man, it's just fun to shoot. I could see spending a whole afternoon getting young people. Uh, I'm sure my son would enjoy shooting that gun. But if you're looking at a cheap alternative to train in context, may or may not be a great choice based upon the weight. Uh, aside from that, as always, Glocks seem to run reliably. It's something that I would probably look forward to uh, picking up, if for any other reason than to get my son involved in shooting and just to have some fun shooting some cans off the back porch into the backstop. Now, back to Meet the Pressers. Aren't you and Mike working on something together for um, the USCCA? I'll, I'll let Mike talk about that if Mike wants to. I don't know. Can we talk about that? I don't care, yeah. <laughs> Better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. Awesome. Cool. So, All right, well, you heard it here first. So uh, what you working on, Matt? Um, I'm working on a pepper spray curriculum for the USCCA uh, to be released. It's going to be a defensive use of pepper spray and a little bit of defensive tactics mixed in with pepper spray. Have you signed the contract yet? I have. It's all done. Then you can put this out there, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm well, so stay tuned for that. That'll be available, and Mike and, and Matt are working on that. That's excellent. Um, we also did... Uh, uh, a range safety officer okay. curriculum that we'll be launching this year as well. I mean, the idea in mind there is that it's specific to the handgun defense industry. So a lot of ranges that we've been partnering up with have expressed an interest in um, us providing them with a, a range safety officer opportunity for their employees. So they can go online and get that certification, which is um, convenient. Yeah. Um, again, it provides consistency across the board, not just at one location, but all locations. And as they go through their turnover, um, next person in, stand up, log in, and look at what it takes to become a good range safety officer. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's great that you guys put that in there. And I want to say also, from the standpoint of the CCHDF instructor development, the additions that you and I believe Beth was pretty pivotal in, put, in implementing those, those are awesome. They're great, uh, and I'm seeing great response from them, from the instructor candidates, too, going yeah. through that training. I mean, everything that we do at Delta Defense, the USCCA, is a collaborative team effort. So I can't do my job without Mike's help, and that goes that way throughout the organization, and that's why what we do is so good, because it's not just one person's thoughts and actions, it's the combined thoughts and actions of many, which is, much more powerful thing. You know? Well, and, and it's a testament to how things are 
just the quality of the stuff that comes out with you guys and the work you do. I mean, I know some of the after action reviews I've sent you, you're probably like, but I, mean, I was afraid that you'd very break detailed. me off. He's very detailed. Well, Clint's more detailed. Yeah, they're both very detailed. Yeah, I don't know if you enjoy getting my after yeah, action reports. I was reports. thinking the same thing. like 10 pages yeah. long. Well, mine, like two, but still. Well, yeah, maybe 10. Mine too. Yeah. Well, you know, it's my job to make sure that, that we're putting out good instructors, you know. We're training them and supporting them and advertising for them. And when people go to their classes, you know, they're representing the USCCA brand. Yeah. And anybody that comes out and does a bad job at that is a reflection on all of us in this room here um, to a brand that's really earned a very powerful reputation in the industry. I mean, look around at shot. What do you see all over the place? The USCCA branding. Yeah, so uh, we're heavily invested. Tim has really done an amazing job of uh, answering that, that want, that prayer that he had. 15, 16 years ago, you know, to help people know how to protect themselves and their family, their loved ones. It's a good thing. It's a righteous mission. Yes, I yeah. always say, you know, I love what I do, but I hate that I have to do it. I mean, that, that's the epitome of what we do. We do yeah. it. We're good at it. We love doing it. But it's sad that we have to do it because there's evil out there that want to stop us from just being, you know, part of society and doing good things in the community and such. So. You know, one of the things I want to talk to your audience about, too, is the importance of training. So Mike develops the online stuff, but it directs people to the in-person trainers. Mm -hmm. We are very clear in our communications that picking up a book, a DVD, downloading a file and watching a video, that's good, but not good enough. You have to go see a professional. You have to go see there's, them. There's no replacement for a real instructor face-to-face yeah. -face working so, with them. Totally true. Yeah. But, it, but the online thing is nice is that people who would maybe not seek out that training, this is kind of like the gateway for them sure. to get into the training and be like, hey, I can do this. You know, I can learn this. I can do it. And now I'm ready to go see an instructor. For a lot of people, that's a very intimidating thing to do. It gets them in a non-confrontational you know, non way. They can see it. People don't want to look thoughts. stupid. People don't want to look ignorant. Yeah. So if they have information that builds them up, gives them a little bit more confidence, then they'll go out see and see an actual instructor and get some training. And some of the blended programs, uh, to use that term, like for oh. instance the DSF, people do that online training first, they get acclimated to concepts yeah. and principles, so when they come to work with the instructor on the range, they have an idea of what you're, you're not talking starting about. at zero. Right. It's not drinking from the fire hose necessarily. Instead of going from the six inch line, we're going down but, maybe to the oh, two I remember, inch. I remember hearing that. That was in the video, I remember. And then it clicks. Right. right. So that, that helps Positive reinforce that exactly. learning experience. And we, we provide a textbook as well for them to take notes. Yeah. Yep. It is really necessary to be able to come out of the training with the best experience possible. Hey everybody, I'm Top Shot Chris Chang and this is Meet the Pressers with Matt and Quinn. Meet the Pressers. Pull. I don't know what happened. One other added benefit that I've in encountered since working with USCCA is the team teaching aspect. I've spent a lot of my earlier career in this, in this uh, education industry, if you'll call it that, as the lone instructor. And you guys have put me in positions where I had to team teach. And uh, getting to see other people teach the same things I teach, but putting their kung fu on it and their spin on it has yep. helped me become a better instructor. So I always tell all the instructors out there, any DSF instructors, any CCHDF instructors out there that teach the USC curric USCCA curriculums, if you want to come and assist me or audit one of my classes, I have an open door policy for folks to come. And I've had quite a few DSF instructors over the last you know, couple months come and travel to Pennsylvania. Actually, a couple of them have flown on airplanes to get there to come and assist and, and audit. And it's, it's a great opportunity to then have a debrief afterwards and help them develop as instructors. I think that's part of my job as a senior training counselor for USCCA, but also one that's teaching the DSF program as well. That's awesome. The USCCA 2020 training tour um, for instructor development. So we are recruiting and training instructors to be certified to teach concealed carry and home defense fundamentals. Okay as well as defensive shooting fundamentals. We even are hosting two training counselor courses this year in West Bend at company headquarters. If you want to become an instructor, all you have to do is go to uscca.com slash backslash training and then click on the become an instructor button and it'll show you where we're gonna be 
when we're going to be there. 20, 21 stops this year? 21 stops That's this right. year, yeah. And quite often you guys give us a phone call and we come out and, and help teach those courses. So I look forward to Likewise. attending some of them. And if you can't make any of those classes for whatever reason, Matt and I have USCCA courses, uh, Concealed Carry Home Defense Fundamentals and the DSF program uh, booked throughout the country as well. That's One like last thing is uh, we have this outside sales team now that you guys are aware of and we kind of alluded to it a little bit. That shot this year, that's one of the biggest things that we're doing is um, signing ranges up all over the United States to become partners with the USCCA. Awesome. And all of their instructors will be teaching our curriculum. So, cool. man, we're growing yeah. and, uh, and it's a good thing. Well, I look forward so. to continuing to grow with you guys and I thank you for the, the growth that you've facilitated in me and, and thank you for being on the show. You're welcome, thank it's you. It's a real Clint. pleasure and Appreciate honor to work guys. with you guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, Matt. And everyone else, if you want to learn more, visit the training portal, uscca.com slash training, or visit Meet the Pressers. That'll take you to Matt's site and my site, and you can see our individual schedules. We'll see you out on the range. Stay safe. Bye now. Until next time. I do. Follow. Subscribe. Click the bell. Like. Share. Meet the Pressers. Hey, Matt Mallory with Meet the Pressers. Here with Michael Hess from ASP. What, what kind of flashlights you got there, Mike? So this is our new Spectrum DF. Uh, this is our first multicolor, in fact, four-color flashlight. So the way it works is our primary mode uh, with all of our flashlights it always defaults to bright white because that's an officer safety factor, which is all that matters to us. So we don't want an officer to turn on a flashlight and have it be on low or strobe or red or blue when what they need to do is light up a room. So whenever you turn on one of our flashlights, no matter what kind of light it is, it always defaults to bright white. But you can program in a secondary mode. So if I turn it on bright white, unscrew the bezel, push this programming button, I can do strobe, low, red, green, blue. So red to preserve night vision, uh, green or blue to cut through fog, bodily fluids. There's lots of different applications for different colors. Whichever color I'm on when I close the bezel is gonna lock in the programming so that when I then go to turn it on, default to white light, but double tap gets my blue. So if I would have programmed in strobe, that double tap would get my strobe. But again, first tap is always bright white, so you don't find you're on the wrong mode uh, when you turn it on. All of our duty lights have a rotary switch in the back, so we've got constant on, locked, turn it off first, locked, or momentary on, so that if you're in a, you've got a weapon in your right hand, and this in your reaction hand, you don't, you don't make a big target. Uh, you can just turn it on momentary. It's a dual fuel light, so it ships with two CR123A batteries, but you can upgrade it to fully programmable with an 18650 battery. Uh, it charges right in the light. There's a charge status indicator, uh, so you've always got, always got a power source. Um, got a foam grip, reversible pocket clip, lots of other cool features. And DNA collector here in the front, I see. <laughs> We don't use them for that, but we know that they Sorry. can be. Pot yeah, no, we, we know law, that law enforcement site kicked in there. Can't for a you? Second. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, you can't get it out of your system. No. Nope. Um, last but not least, we're trying something that's a little bit different for us with flashlights, and we're we're going after an aggressive price point, which is something that we've never done before. Uh, most of our lights are at the higher end of the spectrum. Forgive the pun. So we're in like the hundred to hundred fifty dollar ultra tactical light category. We're bringing this light in at seventy nine dollars retail. We've never tried that before. Uh, we want. We just kind of want to see what will happen if we make them more accessible. Um, we're expecting it to be a big hit, but we'll uh, we'll see what happens. So we're we're real proud of it. Um, it's compatible with our tactical light case, which I don't have here, but we've got a rotary belt case that lets you use it hands-free uh, on your waist, so you can keep it pointed at somebody, and you can stay in your interview position, and leave the light, and as you know, being trained, um, uh, and and have your hands free to do more important things. Yeah. So, right. Yep. Always have it on me. Well, we say with, you know, everyone knows that two is one, one is none right. expression. In our flashlight training, we say with lights, two is one, one is none, none is stupid. <laughs> so statistically, they've done surveys. The average police officer has three flashlights. Um, and we think that's important. You just, you can't have too many, really. Um, so typically a duty light, a belt light, you know, a backup pocket light, and maybe a keychain light or something, or a clip light if we don't make those. But that's pretty common too. Better to have it, not need it, need it, not have it. Absolutely, cheap insurance. 
So, uh, cool. so that's, that's the that's spectrum. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about that too because with the different color variations, like I remember back in my army days, it was the you know the crooked neck yeah. flashlight. We had to take off the front bezel and the put lenses, lenses yeah. in. But now with the technology, it's come so far with LED. I mean, you're doing it with the same lens. It's just so it's interesting you mentioned that. I won't point the light at the camera, but so we've got four LEDs on a single chip, so four emitters on one wafer in here. Okay. The downside of that, with there aren't a, a whole lot of multicolored lights on the market. The downside is that that has a tendency to create a dark spot in the middle because you're, you, if you can picture four lights in a circle, they're not dead center. So you, they typically wind up off center or they have kind of a plus sign dark spot in the middle. We've actually frosted the lens, which is something we've never done before, and that diffuses the light without taking away from, from the brightness, as you can see. Yeah, but great. if you go to a color, uh, color going here, it, there's no yeah, dark spot not, in the middle. That's awesome. Uh, that's, that's great. Yeah, and, that, and so that's really nice. You get nice, even illumination there. Awesome. So here's the spectrum. Thank you for showing it to us. Yeah, that's, my uh, that's awesome. Can't, nice. wait, can't wait to get one of my duty belt. We'll take care of that. ASP is a sponsor of our show, so make sure you give them your business. And if you want a little bit of a discount, 15% off, you can use MTP15. Hey, everybody, this is Alfred Lanningham with Mantis, and this is Meet the Pressers with Clint and Matt. Meet the Pressers. We've just established that Matt is inadequately PC. What? <laughs> Shot Show 2020 just got done shooting the Springfield Armory Hellcat. Nice little gun, it had a nice snappy, uh, snappy recoil to it, but the nice thing is it had a very aggressive grip which helped, which helped keep it in my hands. Check it out. I just shot the Hellcat, the Springfield Hellcat. I have to say that it would probably be a very great choice if concealment was your primary concern with uh, choosing a firearm. Uh, it does have the extended magazine base plate, so you're gonna have to break your grip to do a reload, which is not necessarily a feature that I look for in a pistol. I will say the trigger was very, very nice. I did enjoy the trigger. The grip angle, not so sure about for my hands, but I'm interested to see the Hellcat come through some classes and see how they hold up under a full day's worth of training. This is Clint Macro with Meet the Press, signing off. Hi, this is Mike Hughes. Hi, this is Brent Lentz. This is Meet the Pressers. Meet the Pressers. We've got a lot of sponsors that make this show possible. Check them out and give them your business. This episode of Meet the Pressers is made possible with the generous support of Mantis X. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Caltech, Next Level Training, ASP, Saber Red, and the law of self-defense. Car Firearms Group, the safer, faster defense responder, 2.0. Shooter Technology Group, and Henry Rifles. Thank you. Thanks for watching the show. Make sure to subscribe, click the little bell, like, comment, follow, and share. And you can also support us on Patreon, host us to teach a course at your location, or come to our location and take a course. Until next time. Adieu. Thank you for watching Meet the Pressers.